That whole tangent I just went on about uh, the Indians and coming together and all that. I did a little book report, actually in uh, 2020. Nathaniel Philbrick at the book is called uh, Mayflower. I first, I didn't know anything about Prince Philip before I lived in Massachusetts. King Phillips, or King Philip, rather, he was an Indian leader who uh, fought a war and lost against the uh, English settlers in Massachusetts. We could have been pushed back into the ocean. I'm not saying we would have stayed away. I, we're pretty tenacious. But as far as the Indians are concerned, they had us. We were, half of our colony died in Plymouth. And the first winter. They had the capacity and the capability to push us back into the bay, back, get us off of their land. They could not cooperate enough to get it done. That's the big lesson here for me. You study history to learn from it. It's the same thing with the, the Hitler and the, the leftists, the leftist resistance or opposition, I guess, in the early 30s. It's the same fucking lesson. It's the lesson of really of identity politics, if you think about it. Because identity politics in this scenario is the various tribes on the plains. The failure of these tribes to come together at that higher level of tribalism. Not only did that doom the Indians, that's going to be the cannibalistic end of leftism in this country if, and only if, the opposition the moderates, the sensible moderates, the sensible fucking liberals as well. The people who like free speech. The people who think that DEI is an intellectual abortion. The people that know that women are the ones who give birth. They have to stay unified against this. And they also have to protect patriotism. They have to stand up for their country, for their country's ideals in the face of this onslaught. They can't let these ideological colonizers come in and tear the temples down, tear the religion down, and start erecting their own temples to their cosmic god of social justice, subjective social justice. But if you can do that, oh yeah, it's a waiting game because it will happen. These tribes will turn on each other <laughs> or at least leave each other isolated off in the hinterlands, <laughs> right? You see this happening. You, you see this happening within, I think it's like the black feminists attacking white fem. This is what I'm talking about. White feminists are the problem. There's hope. This isn't sausage party hope either because it's built in. It's built into wokeism. It's built into identity politics fragmenting tribalism. Well, if it's going to work, if, if you're preaching about, like an, like an idiot, about both identity politics and unity, as I was talking about at the last podcast, like, blah, 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 segregate us into identity tribes and then preach about coming together? What the fuck are you talking about? Well, <laughs> how are they going to bring themselves together? It's a waiting game. But we have to survive and we have to advocate we have to advocate for our own country and our own country's principles. Individualism, free speech, the right not to believe, the freedom of religion, yes, but also the freedom from religion, regardless of what form it comes in, including the ideological variety. <laughs>